Okay, I see four button head screws here. I'm gonna, I squirt a little coil on all four of them. Now I'm gonna tap, make sure I get fully seated inside the uh, screw head. That one got that one. And I will replace these because I'm guessing there's probably coolant run through here. No, it doesn't look too bad. just those four that are holding this cover on or not. We'll find out here shortly. See if that cover will come off. Yep. Oh. Interesting. This one won't be so bad, I don't think. Zoom you in a little bit. Wish you could see more. Let me sneak in on the side here. All right. Let me go over a little more. Okay, you can see a belt. So this motor is external here. And it has a belt here. A little bit of play. And it's flange mounted. And that's great, I think, uh, because it gives me options. Now my my Emco Turn 240 over there has a motor with a spur gear on it that direct drives this the turret, and that one's going to be a whole lot harder to deal with than this. I think this has got a a regular timing belt. And there's a little bit of slop in it, and I'm not sure if that's where or it's meant to be. Um, but uh, uh, there's a nameplate here too. Let's we'll see if I can read that nameplate and see what the voltage is on that motor. But it's good that it's it's just mounted to that plate there. So I think that'll give me some options if I can't use this motor. Maybe I can find another small three-phase motor or what. But uh, anyway, um, I'm also guessing it probably, well, it doesn't have a brake because it's, that motor shaft's turning. So anyway, um, I think this is workable. A video on the turret operation. I thought it might have a a solenoid or something to lock the turret, but it doesn't. This is a unidirectional turret, it means it only rotates in one direction. And what it does is the motor turns. I took, I've taken it off here. <clears throat> there was a three phase motor that would turn it in one direction and it would go past the pawl and then would reverse it and lock it. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate it here. Right there, it's against the pawl. I'm going to go. You see, you probably heard it drop in. So there's a ramp in the back of the turret tool plate. 
there it dropped in again so I so you reverse it so the motor the turret turns this direction <clears throat> and then at a certain interval it comes back and locks against it and the tool pressures is against that that pole this turret has an encoder on it there's the plate and you see four optical sensors it uses gray logic so if, I don't know if you can see the back of the turret there's a circle here and this this interrupts those photo sensors but there's a cutout right here so at each position some of these sensors are blocked and some of them are open so you've got uh, it's an eight position turret and there are four optical sensors so different combinations would tell the control uh, what position the turret is in um, I'm kicking around some ideas right now on how to control the turret I think it, this, this setup makes it pretty easy uh, I'm actually thinking about just using a stepper motor uh, with no feedback <clears throat> um, for now and use one of the optical sensors so that when the machine's homed, the turtle home to uh, tool position one and lock there. And then uh, when a tool change is called, then it'll rotate uh, however many degrees it needs to make, to make it to the tool change and then reverse and lock against the pawl. So uh, if I have enough inputs, I'll use all four inputs to tell the control where it's at. Uh, that way we know that the turret, uh, that way we know that the tool change is completed and it's in the correct tool position. That would be the best case scenario. All right, that's it for now. That just shows a little bit of preliminary work. Like I said, to, in my mind, the two most difficult things are gonna be that spindle motor, that DC spindle motor, and replacing it with an AC three-phase motor. It's more standard and common. And then the turret motor. And uh, it's nice to see that the turret motor is uh, kind of a standalone unit. It's not interfaced directly with the turret like the uh, Emco Turn 240 that I have in my shop over there. Uh, and this one just gives things, gives some more uh, possibilities. Still need to understand the turret and uh, how it works. Um, I have to. I, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any makers markings on this turret. I don't see a nameplate. Uh, it could very well be that Emco made this turret because I would think if it was a solder or something else. I'll take you around to the front. I would think it was a solder or something there would be a a maker's mark on it so I'm kinda guessing this this is a an Emco turret but uh, if anybody knows post in the comments below and let me know alright talk to you guys soon